Hey everyone, welcome to 2020, a new year filled with great gaming content. Here's my first review of the year on a charming little indie game coming to Nintendo Switch that caught my eye during my holiday break. Squidlet feels like the underdog of indie games with a ton of heart and charm. Designed with the limitations of the Game Boy in mind, both in terms of game design and visuals, Squidlet feels like a long lost retro game. Squidlet drops you into the Game Boy theme world of the anthropomorphic squids. You play as an adorable squishy Squidlet who sets off on a journey to stop the evil god emperor's plans. As far as the plot goes, it's shallow, but that doesn't keep its writing from being a delightful ride of cuteness and humor. Squidlet is on par in his adorableness with HAL Laboratory's Kirby, only less versatile in moveset. Still, his ability to hop and squirt ink makes him one deadly foe for the comedically aware adventure he goes on. With the intent of recreating the retro era of video games, the developer duo Alex and her wife Samantha created Squidlet as their first attempt at retro recreation. The Game Boy was their primary source of inspiration, and it quickly became apparent that this was meant to feel and play as if it were being played on a Game Boy, despite being for PC and Nintendo Switch. Squidlet himself can only really jump or hop. His only form of attack is done by jumping twice and squirting ink to anything below him. It's a jack of all trades move that acts as an attack and a jump for this retro platformer. Like other games from the era it was inspired by, most of the game design evolution comes from the enemies and the environment rather than the protagonist's moveset. For Squidlet, that evolution comes from the different types of enemies and the constantly changing environment. The spacing between enemies and how quickly they move challenged me to time my jumps correctly to either dodge or attack them below. I came across the likes of little critter bugs to larger scale sharks coming out of cocoons. They'd be separated into different sections ending with a mini boss. You can think of these sections as levels, though because of the way Squidlet was designed, the entire game can't be saved, meaning that you have to beat the game in one go. Luckily, you can complete the entire campaign in about 40 to 60 minutes for a quick playthrough in a single sitting. Despite its rather short length, which is softened by the $2 price tag, I found myself enjoying Squidlet's simple and entertaining gameplay. While there wasn't a great amount of depth to its gameplay, the self-aware writing of its characters led to many laughs and giggles throughout my initial playthrough. Squidlet wears its inspiration on its sleeve by forcefully limiting its visuals to the 8-bit visuals of the original Game Boy. It follows the same score aspect ratio, but allows the player to fill in the blank space with a frame as if it were being played on the Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo. The attention to detail here is vastly appreciated, coming off as a love letter to the era. Squidlet's design is simple, but easy to fall in love with, and I immediately did. Pressing down on the D-pad made him do a little dance and I couldn't help but smile every time it happened. The main drawback I saw while playing was how zoomed in the camera was to everything. Of course, that's a consequence of building this within the color limitation of the original Game Boy. Twidlet's music is a happy-go-lucky orchestra of chiptune goodness. All the music produced in this comes from the original Game Boy, crafted through the chiptunes that only helps sell the authenticity of the project. The retro recreation literally speaks volumes not just through its graphics, but its music and audio design. Squishy Road was easily one of my favorite tracks. It's refreshing and feels like walking through a vibrant country road on a summer day. Squidlet is a treat of an indie game that harkens back to the era of the Game Boy, made to emulate the game design philosophy of the past while also using the hardware to make its music and visuals, Squidlet pays tribute to its inspiration. Being built with that in mind, I felt a sense of nostalgia, but also came across the drawbacks of the hardware. However, for a $2 indie game that lasts about an hour, I found this to be more than worth the trip and the investment. It's an ideal game to play on a quick commute into the city, which, me being in LA, is pretty often at this point. Thank you so much for watching the first review of 2020 for me. Expect a lot more in the future with Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and Tokyo Moran sessions coming in the future, and many more to come for the rest of the year.